coronavirus, COVID-19, the woo flu. Haven't heard that one in a while. Whatever you want to call it, I'm sure you're tired of hearing about it, but it keeps on messing up our lives. Now this isn't just another COVID-19 video. This is a Climber Dad video. And this topic that keeps on messing up our lives is going to be directly related to climbing and climbing gyms. And it's gonna be some pretty interesting information that you may just wanna know about even if you don't go to climbing gyms. Now if that sounds like something that you may be interested in, let's get started. I've heard that the United States has been hit the hardest by COVID-19. Now I don't know if that's true or not, but I've taken all of the numbers for this presentation from the United States. I don't think that that really affects how it's going to apply elsewhere. It's really just so we can get a little bit more of an understanding on what we're dealing with here. I've taken the total death counts from a few states and compared that to the death counts that have something to do with COVID-19 in those states. Now, it doesn't mean that COVID-19 was the main cause of death or that it was the only cause of death. It just means that there was some kind of a connection with COVID-19 and those deaths. All of these numbers are coming from the CDC website. I'll have a link down in the description below. And I'll have a link for the description of everything that I'm talking about here down below. Tennessee. Tennessee is like one of the best states that you could go to in the fall time for climbing. Don't believe me? Just look it up. The death count that has something to do with COVID-19 compared to all death counts is 4.6%. So 4.6% of everyone that's died in Tennessee from February 1st to October 10th has had something to do with COVID-19. Let's look at another state, okay, Colorado. Colorado is another great place to go climbing. Should, it's a beautiful place. I hear that it's even a good place for other things. 6.5% of their deaths have something to do with COVID-19. Utah. I have a couple of friends and family that live in Utah, and I would say just from my personal observation, there is not another place that I've heard of that have, has fought wearing a mask as much as they have in Utah. What's their death count like? 3.4% of their deaths from February 1st to October 10th have had something to do with COVID-19. California. California. That's another great place to go climbing, but I'm sorry if you live there and your government, your local government, is driving you out because they're so crazy. I really hope that that doesn't become America's federal government. Ooh, ouch. So 7.6% of the deaths have something to do with COVID. How about Wyoming? Wyoming is an amazing place. I would love to live there. I have friends that live there. I have family that lives there. But I will probably never live there because it is such a harsh environment that apparently COVID-19 doesn't even exist there. 1.8% of their deaths have had something to do with COVID-19. What about the worst state? Wyoming is the best state, the best state that I saw. The worst state is New York. In fact, New York is so bad that they are trying to project their numbers without including New York City. Imagine that. The death rate or the percentage of people that have died that had something to do with COVID-19 in New York State, if you're just looking at the state, 14%. Now, if you include the entire state, which yes, does include New York City, it's 22%. Kind of went up a little bit. So there's the numbers of the states. Now, I'm not trying to say that this is not a big deal and we shouldn't be worrying about it. It is a big deal. A lot of lives have changed 
because of this pandemic and how we've responded to it. Some people may argue that we haven't responded strongly enough, while other people may argue that we have responded too strongly. And I'm not here to debate that either way. See, I was a former climbing gym owner and we had to shut down. We actually shut down voluntarily because we didn't know what was going on. We watched the data, we watched everything that was coming out and we felt it was safe to open back up. And when we were allowed to open back up, we did. And we put in place parameters and things to make it as safe as possible. We fogged the gym every single day. We limited the number of people that came into the gym so there was adequate spacing. But we didn't have the volume of people that came back because there was so much fear. And what I'm here to say is that fear that's keeping you away from a climbing gym might not be as bad or as warranted as you may think it is. There was a wonderful study that was done by De Montfort University Leicester with COVID and climbing chalk. The results shown that within just one minute of the virus coming into contact with the chalk, the number of infectious particles in all samples was reduced by more than 99%. Yeah, reduced by more than 99%. I don't know how more positive you can get that shows that climbing chalk and coronavirus cannot coexist. So that means that when you go into the climbing gym and you're touching all of those plastic holes that everybody else, all those other climbers with chalked up sausage finger hands are touching too, you don't have to worry about getting the coronavirus on your hands because it will be neutralized within one minute. More than 99% success rate? Climbing gyms are not coronavirus transmission parties. They're not. You can go climbing and feel safe. Chalk it up, baby, chalk it up. Now most climbing gyms are going away from the powdered chalk, although that, that's not necessary. Friction Labs, beautiful company in Colorado, has actually made a liquid chalk that has 80% alcohol in it, which is the required amount for it to be considered a hand sanitizer. Yes, that stuff that your children are bathing in in school, 80% minimum alcohol. You can now just buy some friction labs that are hygienic liquid chalk. So here you go, kids. Sanitize your hands. Now, even though Mad Rock makes some chalk blocks that are called chocolate, we probably shouldn't eat this stuff. Don't eat that. But it is a wonderful thing to know that climbing chalk saves lives. And if that's not a t-shirt already, I'm gonna make sure that it's a t-shirt. You're welcome. You are more likely to catch the coronavirus by going to the supermarket or practically any other public area than you are a climbing gym. That actually gives me a good idea. Okay, maybe that's not a good idea, but and go to the climbing gym and have a good time. Now, 
My channel typically revolves around climber dad advice towards owner-built climbing walls and gyms. It's usually what it's about. I throw some climbing videos in there every once in a while and I get my kids involved also. If that sounds like something that you may be interested in and you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and I will see you next time right here on Climber Dad.